um, Professor, for willing to uh, sit down with me uh, for this interview. Uh, July 6 marks the 25th anniversary of the uh, first graduates uh, since independence. Uh, they joined 1991, um, I believe it was uh, around September. They graduated in 1996. So that make them the uh, first ones to graduate since uh, after independence. Um, Professor, um, I'll introduce you real quick, um, Professor Rosen, um, Richard Rosen, of course. Uh, we know you by Rich, uh, um, a former UNC law professor, University of North Carolina, who spent the 1995-96 uh, school year on a Fulbright Fellowship uh, teaching at the University of Asmara. Professor, thank you again. And why did you pick Eritrea? Uh, why did I pick Eritrea? Yeah. Um, one, because uh, uh, the, uh, uh, there was an uh, attempt or an uh, uh, effort to have a linkage between our university and the University of Asmara. Um, I have been following the Eritrean freedom struggle for years in the press. I was very, always very impressed with the resourcefulness uh, uh, and uh, stubbornness of the Eritrean uh, <laughs> uh, movement. And uh, I was given a chance, close to being 50 years old, of actually participating in, in the formation of a new country and a uh, uh, new legal system. Um, so it was an exciting opportunity for me. Uh, my biggest issue was uh, convincing uh, my family to come with me because I did not want to be gone for right. a year with yeah. them. And, uh, but we loved it. Well, wonderful. Well, I, uh, I can dearly call you then. You're a dear friend of Eritrea in that case. I thought, I thought you just you just came. You didn't know about Eritrea from. Um, I mean, you 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 weren't following the Eritrean struggle from from before, and that's wonderful to have people like you. Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, um, let me just say thank you on behalf of the Eritrean people. Um, and and was it so coming from. Um, a fairly prestigious school or highly regarded school, UNC, uh, you came to University of Asmara. What was your one, I mean, like, why, why would you want to go to uh, uh, University of Asmara, which we're just about to restart? Uh, because as you know, it was moved to Ethiopia uh, right before uh, independence. And they, they, they so, at that point when you kind of came, that the students that joined in 91 uh, had a lack of uh, or shortage of faculty, resources, um, and a whole lot of uh, uh, limitations. And you, I don't know why you would want to come to a school uh, living um, a good life uh, per se um, uh, in, in North Carolina. Well, I mean, from my perspective, the opportunity, the chance to, to help create something important um, was in, in, in potentially significant in the future of the country. Now, what turned out is we all know is somewhat different, but at that point, it was looking very hopeful. And so I saw myself having a, a, a very fortunate opportunity to work with, I thought, some very, very talented and dedicated individuals, Eritreans. Uh, to help create something that would have a meaningful impact. Um, yeah. Prestige doesn't matter much. Um, it, is, it is what you hope for in this world is to leave behind something worthwhile. And this was a chance for me to participate in something that I, I felt very, I felt fortunate to have the opportunity, I guess is how I would put it. That's one. And what, did you have expectations? And um, if you did, did the students at that time or your students per se um, meet your expectations? I, you know, I, I learned a lot from my students. I, I, can't, I can't tell you I had expectations. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I, I found the students to be incredibly dedicated, incredibly hardworking. 
Um, I did not realize uh, uh, when I came how hard it was to study law in, in a second language. Uh, all my students' English was either a second or a third language, and I had to adjust for that. But I found the students to be uh, 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 great to work with. I mean, you know, in the U.S., if, you know, if most of the students or many law students are there because they didn't know what else to do. Um, <laughs> Law is a way when you get out of undergraduate school and you look at the world and say, well, maybe I'll try being a lawyer. I mean, we had many students at UNC who really did want to have an impact on the world. And I enjoyed that. But um, so I, I can't say I had any expectations either way. I can say that by the end of the year, I both admired and appreciated my Eritrean students. Um, you know, I was involved in this linkage program for years, and I was able to help many of them uh, study abroad. Uh, we had funding from the USAID and, and uh, through our universities, the University of North Carolina, and I felt good about not only helping uh, uh, these students get a uh, first degree, but also uh, uh, sending them to universities around the North America to help them get the second or sometimes even third degrees. And I, and I thought that was, a, that was a great opportunity. That's wonderful. I wasn't privileged enough to be your student, but I, I, I know of um, a number of students um, who were stu your students. A number of uh, them are my friends. And, um, they highly regarded and highly talked of you and your teaching um, skills and the way you interacted with them. And it was very good. Um, so as I said earlier on, there was lack of faculty, lack of resources. Um, how were you able to, um, to, to cope up? You do the best you can. I mean, if you think about it, uh, uh, I was sharing an office with uh, 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 Professor Teclia Abraha uh, and, uh, and, you know, Johannes Hapdeselassi would come in and, you know, Teclia said he spent years in a cave working and, you know, sharing an <laughs> office was fine. Right, right, um, right. You know, I appreciated the, 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 what the folks who I was working with had gone through, uh, either having been in prison or been part of the struggle or some other hardship. And so to me, I was coming from a very privileged, very comfortable background. And, you know, you adjust. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes we had electricity, sometimes we didn't. Um, sometimes we had internet access, sometimes we didn't. Uh, email for the university for a long while came through my personal computer because there was no other link. And so um, I, I, it would come and then I would distribute it or somebody else would use my computer to distribute it. But, you know, that's, those are minor things. Um, you know, what, we, were, what, what, we, were, we, we were comfortable compared to most people in Eritrea. We had Fulbright provided us with a very nice house and, uh, uh, you know, we had schooling for our children. And so I felt that it was, um, it wasn't a hardship. Um, it was, I had my family with me. I had Eritrean friends who we spent our time with. I was learning a new culture. Uh, we tried to learn Tigrinya, completely failed, um, much too hard. Uh, we actually hired a tutor for a while and he, it was just, it was just too much at our age. Was, was, was Wiley your teacher then? What did I get uh, with? Not that I remember, no. Okay. We, okay. we the, the faculty, you mean my teacher is a language teacher? Uh -huh. uh, no, it was, it was some retired person in the community who was recommended to us. And he tried, okay. but yeah. there was, you know, once you hit, what we were told is once you're over 30 or 40, unless you have no choice, it's just hard to learn another language. No, I, I so completely understand. I tried French myself um, while I was, I, I was um, younger, probably 24, 23, and um, I failed miserably. Uh, but French, uh, as, I, as I heard, is a very, very difficult language to learn with many exceptions. Um, uh, it, 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 was, it was tough. But I, I also taught Tigrinya um, to Peace Corps volunteers uh, mm -hmm. in the uh, third batch, which were probably like a number of them, like around 40, 42. 
Um, they're very good. Um, they, 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 they got to learn um, some. I don't know 20 years later, 30 years later, if they retained any, <laughs> but I still um, get in touch and they, they seem to be uh, fine. No, you know, like they know the, the, the kind of the, the word, some words at least. Um, so we talked about the faculty. I know uh, you were sharing um, some experience. Uh, so, and, and sharing a, an office with Tekla is probably a, a great thing as well, because uh, he was a fighter and I'm sure you would, you would, he would share with you his experience back uh, in the fields. But I think uh, during your time, um, I was also there. I um, was a student, I joined in 92, 93. So um, there was an interruption. Were you there at that time? There was not an interruption when I was there for that year. There was, uh, clearly there were interruptions later, but in 95, 96, we did not have any interruptions. Okay. And you were on, the, the administration then would have been under uh, Dr. Andabraham then? No, when I was there, it was uh, um, Waldab. Waldab. Okay, Dr. Waldab. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what were, what were the uh, pressures, uh, if you've seen any, um, that was coming from the administration at that time? Really, there were n none that bothered me. I mean, they were pressuring us to, to adopt a curriculum. They wanted a law school, and we needed to come up with, I forgot whether it was a three- or four-year curriculum, and we worked very hard. We ended up getting one approved. Um, but I, I found, and I know many people had difficulties with World Up, uh, I found him to be, you know, really supportive of us trying to push things forward. Um, he was impatient. Uh, he, I know that my colleagues quite often were having difficulties with him. Um, I would argue with him, uh, convincing him that, uh, in, you know, that, that in the United States, uh, in much of the world, uh, the uh, JD degree, the Juris Doctor degree, was a terminal degree and that we should treat it with respect. Um, but I found, I didn't find any, any, diff, any pressures that bothered me. Um, no. I found, you know, basically he was impatient. He wanted things to move forward. He did not, right. you know, um, but I had, I had no problems dealing with him. Did you, did you get a chance to um, see him again when he came to the U.S.? No, I didn't. And, and I, you know, of course, and I forget whether it was in 2001, where, where he was basically, I know that the law students were in the middle of um, the protests, and uh, uh, he was dealing with pressure from both sides. I have not heard from him since he uh, him left for the U.S. Right. And I heard he is, he is uh, somewhere in California, but I have never... Well, I, I don't know that that close, but I heard he's uh, somewhere in, in California. Um, so as, as last time we talked, you told me that you also um, worked as a, an advisor to the Ministry of Justice. Yeah, I, after I came more? back to the U.S., um, the, the, uh, um, the ministry got a U.N. grant to write new codes. Um, and I was part of a three-person team, uh, an, an American lawyer, Marty Ganslas, and a, and a uh, um, uh, McGill University uh, a law professor, Patrick Healy, uh, as being the kind of outside uh, advisors, drafters uh, for the P new, a new penal code and a new criminal procedure code. And so for, I guess it was a four or five year period, uh, I was involved uh, with that. We would spend months here working on drafts. Uh, we would send them to Asmara. Uh, the, they had a committee, uh, for, you know, at first, of course, with uh, 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 Tayami, the Chief yeah, Justice, yeah. and others, mm -hmm. and the Attorney General, uh, I guess it was Musa at that point, Musa Naib, uh, who would go over our draft meticulously. We would then go to Asmara. We would have these very large, highly publicized meetings with them members of the legal community and, and police and pretty much everybody in the women's movement, we would debate right. uh, our draft. And, and we were told, which one of the things I always admired about Eritreans is you can suggest what we do, but we decide. And, they would, <laughs> they would, um, and, and I was fine with that. And so they would debate it and they'd send us back and we redraft and we'd come back again. So that lasted, 
I think till well, it certainly lasted through the resumption of hostilities with Ethiopia. Ninety-eight. Um, yeah, and then it was. I'm pretty sure I was there in 2001, um, when the of course the government split and a number of people were arrested, um, and so I was in and out uh, during that period of time. And and it was frankly, it was a fascinating procedure. It was very open. Um, whatever ended up, we were told that whatever we did had to comply with the draft constitution, um, which is ironic. Um, but <laughs> It was it was taken very seriously. And I remember, you know, even the police officials who we were dealing with saying, well, you know, here's why it does or does not comply yeah. with the Constitution. So we were operating under the assumption that there, there there would be a meaningful Constitution, at least pretty much what had been drafted, uh, but right. never adopted. But of course, that never happened. So, Correct. Uh, and that was, and that's, that, you know, like looking back, um, I know that everything you have done, you worked hard, and and as you said, uh, a lot of people um, were um, interested and seemed very enthusiastic about uh, the draft that you were working on. Um, but to only find that to be flashed in a drain, uh, into a drain now. What goes into your mind? Well, you know, I mean, you do the best you can, and sometimes you can have an impact. You have to understand, I, I spent a lot of time doing death penalty cases in the U.S., and you lose them. Uh -huh. And so all you can do is choose, choose what you're going to do, do it to the best of your ability, and then there are going to be outside forces that control what happens. I mean, I mean... I'm, you know, they actually ended up adopting the codes we drafted. Uh, I think they did in 2015. Whether they're followed or not, I have no idea. Um, but, you know, I feel I feel much worse for all my Eritrean friends who gave their lives, gave so much of their lives to a, uh, an independent Eritrea and a free sure. Eritrea. And I, I had one friend who's now deceased. And I remember he told me, he said, I had two dreams. One, Eritrea would be independent, and two, we would be a model for other countries. I got one of the two. Um, and that, you know, for people like you and all my students who I think could have really contributed to the rebuilding of society who are in the U.S. or Sweden or wherever, those are much bigger losses than mine. I got, you know, it turns out I got a lot out of this. I met a lot of fascinating people, and so I have, you know, my losses are minor. Um, uh, it was it was a great experience. Um, I met good people, uh, and I did. We did our best. Right, and, right. And you know, but we don't know what's going to happen in the next generation. True, and and it's very sad. Uh, Twenty five years later, well, in fact, thirty years later, uh, we we we're only talking about war and not peace and uh, uh, lack of human rights. Uh, laws and the penal code that you were talking about, I'm sure it hasn't been um, uh, signed into law. The constitution itself has been, well, shelved, uh, to say the least. I am sure you probably talked to Professor uh, Barak Tateslati and he talks uh, about that. Um, it's a very sad situation, obviously. Um, but again, uh, most of your students are now um, majority except for a number of them, probably uh, uh, less than 10 um, are outside of the country. Right. Uh, and that's, that's very sad. Um, uh, these people could have done a, a whole lot. Um, so what goes through your mind? Did you even think that those students would have left the country? Did you think that they would have done something for the country? Well, you know, at the time that I was there and for the next couple of years, and I think it, you know, was until the start of the second war, uh, the Ethiopian 98, um, right. you know, Eritrea had a, had a reputation as the highest number of people who left to study returned to Eritrea. Um, oh. it, it was uh, you know, at that point, in, at that point, I mean, it was, you know, and so obviously I was hopeful and, and I think people were looking to come back. And then when things went bad, um, you know, I, 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 I totally understand why would you go back and, and get trapped there? It's sad. 
I mean, there are things, you know, there, there, there are individual circumstances and then there are larger forces at work and the larger forces here for whatever reason um, and in whatever cause uh, overtook the, you know, a lot of the hopes that were there. I do think that the students, when I was teaching them, that the students really did look towards rebuilding the country and playing a major role. Um, they were not going to be allowed to do that, not in any meaningful, independent way. And so, yeah, it's sad. Um, I feel worse for them than for me because many of them left family there. Um, and it is, you know, the one thing I learned by being in Asmara, as wonderful as everybody was, it's not easy being in a different culture. Um, you know, I was there in a very privileged position. I mean, I had, you know, I was, I was supported by the U.S. Embassy. I had, you know, financially, we were better off than almost everybody around. Um, I had my family with me. Um, and I was doing exciting work. Uh, it still was hard. I mean, it's, you know, it was a good lesson for me for watching that. And then I'm thinking of my students who had to adjust to a new country. Um, if they were going to practice law, had to kind of take the bar. I, a number of students, I wrote letters to the bar uh, associations explaining why they could not provide their transcripts uh, yeah. because the University of Asmara would not provide them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I felt, I, I felt sad for the students. I felt sad for the country. But, you know, that is, I was a history major in college. And one of the mm -hmm. things you learn is that you can, you know, you, you don't control the course of history. And, you know, the, what, you know, I know there's debate about whether it was always predestined that this is what Eritrea was going to look like as long as the current administration is there, or whether something happened in 98, 2001 that changed things. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. So yeah, there's a sadness there, but, you know, for me personally, it still was a highlight of my life participating in all this. So I have no second okay. thoughts about that. You know, you do what you can and the world will go on without us. And, you know, sometimes we have an impact and sometimes we don't. True. I, I'm, I'm sure that there is an impact somewhere there. I mean, most of your students can talk um, uh, about that, obviously. But do you stay in touch with any of the students or anybody uh, from Eritrea? Uh, in no, I, I, have, I have friends in Eritrea that, that I stay in touch with. Um, but... It's hard because there's so the internet is so poor there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I have uh, uh, some Eritrean American friends. So, yeah, I stay in touch with some people, not as much as I'd like. Uh, I think, you know, for a while when I was going back, I went back to, to teach, I think, in 2001. Um, uh, Professor Donna and I, Donna Lefebvre and I, went back to teach summer school to the students, or I guess maybe have been 98, 99, who had left to go fight when the Second War started, and then they right. came back and we, we taught a summer school. Um, and so I, I am in touch, not as much as, as I would like. And I think, you know, my, my plan was when we when we left in 95, 96, my plan was when I retired to go back and teach at the University of Asmara because I would have a pension from America and I could live in Asmara very cheaply and I could teach there and, you know, that couldn't happen. So when I retired, you know, that, that, that was, it wasn't going to happen. I mean, the last time I was right. back was 2005. Um, and, you know, there was, I, I began to feel, I'm not sure that it was totally safe for my friends in, a, in Asmara to be entertaining an American. Yeah, I mean, um, there is a lot of control, a lot of um, kind of hesitation, and, and people are thought, uh, any, any foreigner is thought to be um, not with good intentions maybe so a lot of people would would be scared and i it's understandable that's how the regime um works and operates obviously um but as you said if you um had to do it all over again what would you have improved what would you have uh, done it i can't think of anything i would have done differently i may have been a little bit more skeptical um about what would finally happen. You learn by experience, but I can't think of anything. I would have gone, I would have taught. 
I really, really enjoyed the students. And you're, you're right. I feel good about what I was able to do with them. And I felt good about the role I played when I came back in terms of, you know, uh, in the linkage, placing law students to different universities uh, uh, in the U.S. Um, we did not have a graduate program at UNC, so we couldn't bring the students to UNC. Yeah, so, I, you know, I, I can't think of anything I would have done differently. Um, I, like I said, I would maybe be a little bit less naive, um, but, you know, you, 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 one thing at my age, you look back on your life and you think, you know, did I, was I on the right side? Was I trying to do the right things? Um, and, you know, in this part of my life, I, you know, I, do I feel in many ways I got more out of my experience in Eritrea than I was able to give? Possibly, um, because it just broadened my horizons and I learned so much, but I can't think of anything. I, I don't regret any of it, okay. not a bit. Oh, that's really good. I, I mean, and that's, that's probably the best feeling, um, not regretting what you've done. Um, um, so, I'm sure you have heard of um, the closure of the University of Asmar. Um, I did, tragically. Right, tragically, of course. And what did you think about that? That was well, all I mean, the university. It, you know, I, I thought it was just, you know, given the, the ambitions in the 90s, which was to create, you know, the world-class university in Africa, and the effort to have all these linkages. And clearly that all fell to political necessities uh, or political perceptions. I, you know, I felt sad. I mean, a lot of it, I just feel sad. It, it, it is, you know, I thought there were, you know, a lot of people, uh, some of them who had come to UNC and other disciplines who I knew, um, uh, who had gone back and had given so much and to have it dismembered um, like that was, it was, it was sad. It was tragic. And, and, uh, um, you know, I know they kept programs going in different parts of the country, but that's different than having a university, a university. all that can happen there, but it's yeah, also yeah. university is also a place where you have ferment, where you have students talking to each other. Uh, and it is, it, it is, can be a threat to a, a regime. Right. Right. Um, I mean, and that's one of the reasons why, I mean, honestly speaking, this is how I see it, right? Um, we, it's been 25 years since um, the first graduates. Um, and more than that, and let's, you know, like uh, almost 24 years for, for my part, most of my, my colleagues or my, my, my friends uh, who were the same batch from all the departments have left, yeah. never came back. So in a way, I mean, like, what would, what is, what is this regime? Is it is the regime for Eritrea even? You know, like, if uh, most of us were keen to and um, enthusiastically working for rebuilding the country, and um, sadly enough, uh, we had to leave, and now we are all uh, scattered all over the world. It's it's very sad. But did you see it coming? Did you think no. the, the the university was going to be closed? No, no, I had no idea. I mean, the, I saw exactly the opposite, which is that they were devoting quite a few resources to building up the university. Right. Um, I thought, and I know that uh, 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 there are many people who had difficulties with Dr. Waldob, but he clearly was fiercely dedicated to building the university. Um, and he was getting support from the government. Um, and, you know, uh, so no, I had no, no, I saw none of that coming. Um, I don't think they would have been reaching out to other universities like around the world, like they were doing if they had that idea. So, I, and I think clearly, you know, about half of the governments didn't see it com coming. Um, you know, the half that has disappeared in, for the last 20 years. Um, so no, I didn't see it coming. And, and it was, it was, you know, I'm old enough that I'm not shocked by anything. Um, you know, I've seen <laughs> the world. That does shock, but no, I mean, I thought I was very hopeful. Um, they really seem to be building a meaningful university. I mean, I know people who came and got PhDs or masters at, at, at UNC and other schools who went back. Uh, and I could really see this developing. And then it was, of course, it was cut short. You know, it was pretty quick. I right. mean, you know, what, and, what and, happened. And, um, 
I know that you might have also heard that there are some colleges that have been mm, supposedly been opened since the closure of the university. Um, you are from the US, of course, and from UNC, and the way the universities, the way things work around here is different. Um, you need some accreditation, unless you're an accredited, accredited by some sort of uh, accreditation body, you are not going to be considered, at least the certificates or diplomas that you get from those schools are not going to be considered or highly regarded as such uh, to get you into schools or anywhere else. Um, so what do you make of those? Well, I mean, I think the, the government has decided they want some people trained to some degree. They're trying to find a way to do it without creating the um, potential for dissent that was there before. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'm uh, uh, for the students who are going to those, I wish them the best and I hope that it helps. Um, is it the same as having what, they, what I thought the University of Asmara would grow into? No, of course not. Um, it is an attempt to get some benefits of higher education without um, uh, what the government perceived of as threats. Right. Um, you know, from the outside, what it looked like is when the university students got together and started, you know, protesting about Sawa. When you know, in, in if my memory is correct, it was led by a law student. Um, you know, the government perceived it as a potential threat and shut it down and then began to look for ways to give some training back. But, that, you know, uh, I can't imagine them reestablishing the University of Asmara until things change politically in Eritrea. Right. And, and that's very good, right? I mean, but come to think of it all over the world, um, those, those people who are, well, either they are scholars or whether they are scholars or students um, of, universities are those people who are going to uh, be future governors, future leaders, future uh, mayors and, and what have you. Um, of course, we are threats, but at the same time, um, if those people are not trained or those people are not there, uh, the country is in great danger and, you know, like, it, at some point in time, governments change. And when these governments are gone, uh, you're not thinking of leaving um, the country with meaningful people. I'm not saying again that there are no meaning, meaningful people in Eritrea again, but at the same time, if you're not training them, if you're not making, I mean, uh, training leaders, then you're, 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 you're a failure. So what do you, well, what do you think? Well, I think one of the things, if you're training leaders, then you're also training people who may want to replace you. And that is clearly <laughs> perceived. I mean, I think Eritrea has lost a generation of incredibly talented people. I mean, I was, I was actually, you know, I was, both my wife, my wife taught and helped start the College of Health Sciences and yeah. taught statistics there. Both of us were just really impressed with the young people we met and what the, that generation has left or is subdued um and it's gonna it's gonna take a long while to recover even if things remarkably change it, it it's gonna take a while to reestablish what was there i mean you had you had an excitement there you know it was a new leadership was literally saying that they wanted this generation to have a role at that point. And uh, we've lost it. Um, they're here, you're in Washington or close to Washington. And you know, my students and, and your, your colleagues are scattered all over the US and the world. Um, and he, that's never gonna be recovered. So it's clearly a loss for Eritrea that is gonna be hard because I mean, certainly at that time, you know, what I was hearing expressed was that we really thought that this first generation after independence would take over and lead the country in, you know, uh, in, in the future. And of course that generation is gone now. Right, very sad, very sad indeed. Yeah. Um, so if things were normal, if things were normal um, in Eritrea and say 
25 years, or I'm 30 years after independence now. What do you think Eritrea would have been? Or where yeah, do you I, think Eritrea would have been? Given who, the, given the young people that I met, I think if they had been allowed to stay, flourish, and lead, I think Eritrea would be a, you know, I mean, it, the, given, the, given the resources of the people, given the determination of the people there, I think Eritrea would be a, a model country. I mean, I, or if not model, it would certainly be a leading uh, uh, light. Um, you know, you had so much, so much was put into winning freedom. So much was being put into developing the country. And, you know, part of my feeling is all this was unnecessary. Um, I think that the EPLF could have won elections fairly under the constitution. Asayas would have been elected, you know, for a long time uh, because he had led the fight for independence. And so I view this as all unnecessary. I think there were times and, you know, when you had the, uh, the group of 15, when you had people saying, we don't have to do this, it could have gone a different way. And I think, I think it would have been a completely different world for many of us. Um, but what can yeah. you say? It's I know, happen. it's very sad situation, but I must agree with you. Had the constitution been um, implemented, we would have, we, Eritrea would have been somewhere else. We would yeah. have been the leading, the leading country in the region would have been a good example. And um, it would be a different case. I mean, we would have lived there, uh, obviously. A lot of my colleagues, my friends are here or somewhere else in the Europe or anywhere else um, serving other governments and other countries. A lot of them, as, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of people who have uh, reached uh, the higher places. Uh, some of them are scholars, some of them are uh, teaching at uh, prestigious universities. Um, and. Unfortunate, yeah. very unfortunate. But yeah. do you follow the uh, politics in the region? Sure. Yeah, um, I mean, I always will. <laughs> of course. What What do you make of the uh, the war in in Ethiopia? And you know, I don't know. I mean, I, what, what, I honestly can't tell. Um, you know, I don't have a lot. You know, a lot of trust in the TPLF. Um, so. Um, I wish Eritrea had stayed out. Uh, I'm not surprised that they went in because the TPLF was their main enemy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, again, it's another sad situation. Um, I think, uh, but I, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to, 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 to judge from where I am because I don't know, did the TPLF really seize an Ethiopian military base? Uh, if they did, then, you know, how, do you, how does the government respond? Um, I really wish that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry to see Eritrea involved in that. Uh, I am, at this point, don't know enough to make a judgment on what the Ethiopian government is doing. Because I don't know, yeah, I don't know whether the, if the TPLF really did start an armed rebellion. Um, uh, and, I, I would, uh, I would be surprised if they did it. Yeah. And so <laughs> if they did point, not, yeah. Right. And At so this I, point, I think that's the only option. Well, the only uh, viable option they see themselves uh, doing, yeah. um, considering they, they, they lost the grip of the, uh, the leadership in the government, yeah. in the parliament, and uh, they've been attacked by the, their own government or the federal government. Um, it, is, it is, I guess, practically the only viable solution for them. But again, um, I feel sorry for the people of Tigray. Of course. Um, and of course, Eritrea. It's, it's uh, very, very heartbreaking to see a lot of displacement, a lot of yeah. uh, deaths and, and human rights. It's a horrible situation. Civil wars are horrible. And that's what this is. And uh, uh, but, uh, but as far as assigning ultimate blame for this, I, I just honestly don't know. Right, right. Good enough. Uh, well, so obviously, as I said earlier on, this interview is uh, in observance of the 25th uh, anniversary, which uh, uh, is uh, coming July 6th, uh, in, in about two weeks. Um, what, what would you like to say to the, to the students or to the well, grads? What I'd like to say is, first of all, congratulations on, on 
basically uh, uh, taking what you learned and finding yourself um, playing a role in a new society or a different society than you anticipated. I, I, I really admire what so many of my students, so many of your colleagues have done, which is taking a bad situation and finding a way to contribute and to live a meaningful life. Uh, so congratulations to y'all. Um, I think we all share a sadness about the fact that we're, um, we're not doing this from Asmara. Um, it would have been nice if this was a quarter century after you graduated and we were all gathering in Asmara to uh, um, drink some Zabib and, and you know, uh, I know. Uh, celebrate. <laughs> celebrate. You, still, you still remember. Huh? I remember Zabib. I was fond of it. Right. Um, and, and uh, uh, but that, that, you had no control over that. And so I, I, I'm glad that you all have stayed in contact with each other, that you have a sense of solidarity. Um, you know, there is always part of my mind that thinks maybe in five years, you can have the 30 year celebration in Asmara. Um, God, which willing. Was, uh, God willing. And, uh, um, but aside from that, I wish all of you the best. I will say again that I thought my year in Asmara was uh, one of the more meaningful uh, periods of my life. And I feel lucky to have been part of that society and that university for that brief time, despite how everything turned out for all of us. So uh, congratulations. And uh, I would say, enjoy your, your, uh, uh, what you've achieved despite all the odds. Well, in 30 years, uh, in their 30th anniversary, rather, um, if this, is not happening this Mara. You will definitely be invited along with your family. Of course, your your kids are now probably in their thirties. They are. Um, <laughs> so they, really, they really enjoy Zebib as well. I mean, a uh, mess, of course, we call it, and Zebib and uh, Suwa and and all, all the good stuff. Uh, of course, in this Mara. Any any go backs? Would you like to say a few words? I no, I just, you know, congratulations to everybody. And, and for those of my, the students who personally knew me, who will see this, uh, uh, my best wishes. Thank you so much. I, it's been a pleasure. I had fun. I, obviously, as I said, I wasn't lucky enough to be your student, but uh, I've heard of you. I've heard the good, uh, good work you've done, uh, good accomplishments. And uh uh, congratulations again to the uh, 96 graduates. Um, very good, good people, good friends. And uh, thank you so much, Professor Ross. My pleasure. Take care. Take care. Ciao. Bye.